Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. I have with me here today, Sister Joanna. And Sister Joanna is going to bless us with a song to prepare our hearts for the message today. But before we go to her, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of delivering this message today. We pray that you'll be with us, Lord, and just take me away from it. Put your spirit in my heart. Help me to decrease and you increase and, and give the message that you require for those who are listening. The message that you would like to have in their hearts and to to do the work that you do in all of us, Lord. And we just thank you for everything that you're doing and have been doing and will do today uh, with your message. And we give you all the honor, all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Sister Joanna. Amen, happy Sabbath everyone. We're gonna be studying about living water today. And this is a song about living water. Are you thirsty? Are you empty? Come and drink the living water. Tired and broken, peace unspoken, rest beside the living water. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. Where our hope is secure, we won't fear anymore. Praise to the Lord of living water. You know Christ is calling, find refreshing at the cross of living water. Lay your life down all the old gone rise up in the living water there's a river that flows with mercy and love bringing joy to the city of our god where our hope is secure we won't fear anymore Praise the Lord of living water. Spirit moving, mercy washing, healing in the living water. Lead your children to the shoreline. Life is in the living water. There's a river that flows with mercy and love. It brings joy to the city of our God. Where our hope is secure, we won't fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living water. Praise the Lord of living water. Are you thirsty? Are you empty? Christ is in the living water. Come and drink it. Come and fill. Christ is the living water. There's a river flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. Where our hope is secure, we won't fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living water. Jesus is the living water. Thank you, Sister Joanna. Thank you so much for that beautiful rendition of the living water. And now we must take a closer look at the living water, a uh, part of this good news series we've been uh, studying. And uh, so let us move ahead. <clears throat> Introduction. Our message today explores the concept of living water throughout the scriptures. 
Since water is vital for sustaining human life, it provides the perfect symbolic representation for that which is vital to spiritual life. As revealed in Jesus' own words, it is the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. And that's from John 6, verse 63. And at first, uh, again, we'll look at contention over vital flowing water. And the first passage will be Genesis 26, verses 18 through 22. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> then Isaac dug again the wells of water, which had been dug in the days of his father, Abraham. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. And he gave them the same names which his father had given them. But when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a, a well of flowing water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with the herdsmen of Isaac, saying, The water is ours. So he named the well Eset, which really meant contention in, in English because they argued with him. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over it too. So he named it Sikna. And that word means hostility. And so they, they were getting increasingly angry with uh, uh, Isaac uh, attempting to, to uh, claim these wells, which his father had dug, but they closed up. And uh, so as we can see right off here, uh, water was a very uh, needed and valuable, I, I hate to say commodity, uh, it was vital to, to life in, 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 in the ancient world. And, uh, and of course they got their waters from the ground by digging wells. And so we, we see here the importance of water to life, to human life. Come on in. In verse 22, then he moved away from there and dug another well, and they did not go all over it, so he named it Rehoboth, for he said, at last the Lord has made room for us, and we will be fruitful. Stop. Oh, nice. Very good. Stop. Stop freaking. Stop freaking, fucker. Can I slide this back a little? And now let's let's move to Deuteronomy uh, <clears throat> eight seven through ten. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of streams of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines, fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil and honey. Now we can see here in this first group verse, just like in, in the quarrel between Isaac and, and, and the uh, men from Phil Philistines, water was very needed and good water, flowing water was, uh, of course, as I mentioned, vital to life. And, uh, and, and so uh, we, we can see why the contention between uh, people for, for the good wells of water there in that land. Now, uh, it wasn't a land, uh, that part of the country wasn't a land where there was, you know, rivers of waters or water on top of the ground. And so they dug wells for their, their water and to water their flocks and, and to have water for themselves. Um, and moving on and, and verse nine, a land where you will eat food without shortage in which you will not like anything, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are, are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Okay, now let's, let's have some comments about what we've just read. The patriots knew well the value of life given water. Isaac needed three attempts redigging wells his father Abraham had dug before God gave him success without contention with others. Years later, Moses assured the people that the land God had given them were filled with streams of water 
fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills. And that verse uh, came from Deuteronomy 8, uh, 7. And, and so again here, we're, we're just in, in the beginning, we're, we're recognizing how, how vital water and especially water that flowed on the ground. And, and I have a few comments about that because I was, I was actually born on a plantation and we, we, we didn't have running water, <laughs> brothers and sisters. I guess most of you can't imagine not having run, running water coming out of a faucet in your home, but we did not. We, we <coughs> excuse me. Uh, well, most of the people on, on the Helena plantation where we lived, they had pumps and they pumped their water out of the ground. And what that is, that that's a metal pipe that goes down to the, to the uh, uh, groundwater, to the water table uh, where the water occurs on the ground. And that's an amazing thing because the way God provides this water for us, especially before modern times of technology and having water sources and, 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 and places where cities provide water and they, they uh, um, clean the water and sterilize it, uh, there's another word for that, um, but, and, and make it okay to drink. Now, but groundwater is, believe it or not, is probably better for human consumption than the water that comes from the city because the underground water is filtered through the earth. And down that deep, there is, there is no bacteria, that's just sand and, and, and whatever and soil that filters the water that travel and these, these uh, voids in the earth, water collects in there, but it flows from somewhere else from a, you know, a body of water and it collects in this place. And those are the kinds of places that we're looking for when we pumped our water and that water come out, it was just fresh and clean and, and it was good water. So, uh, so I have a little experience with living with groundwater only, no running water in our homes back then in the 1950s on the Helena plantation. And now let's look at Solomon's love expressed. And for that, we'll go to the Song of Solomon, uh, chapter four, verse 15. You are a garden spring, a well of fresh water and flowing streams from Lebanon. Now, the Song of Solomon, as we know, is really an allegory of Solomon expressing his love to a Solomonite, uh, one of his wives, a woman, However, it's, it's an allegory, it's really for us, it's an allegory of Jesus' love for his church. And so when, he's, when Solomon says, you are a garden, a, a garden spring, a well of fresh water, and we know that that's tantamount to Jesus saying to his, 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 his uh, servant or to us, uh, you are a, a garden spring, you you are you have a the spirit of God in because we know water is is a uh, running uh, living water is is uh, symbolic of the spirit of God and that flowing streams that is the best of of living water a well of fresh water that's kind of stagnated water but it, it could be fresh and good it comes out of the ground also because you dig down to the water table but the well is open but flowing water it maintains its its purity and it's and it's good for drinking and so that is those are the thoughts that is is uh allegorized as Jesus is speaking to us to his those who his his faithful servants or those who obedient and faithful toward him. Amen? Amen. So let's look at the reign of our king. And we know who that is. And we'll, we'll begin that by going to Isaiah 32, verses 1 through 3. Behold, a king will reign righteously, and officials will rule justly. 
Each will be like a refuge from the wind and a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry country, like the shed of a huge rock in an exhausted land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be blinded and the ears of those who hear will listen. Okay, and so here we, 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 uh, we know the king is, is Jesus and, and in his kingdom and his officials will be his, his, his servants, it will be his people, it will be us. And, uh, and what he said and what Isaiah is prophesizing here, when our kings come, uh, when, when our king Jesus uh, set up his kingdom, his officials, who is his, his, his Christians, uh, those of us here today, each will be like a refuge from the wind and a shelter from the storm. Okay, so, so what, what that means is with our service to the Lord, we, we will, we will uh, maintain the, the safety from the elements of the people who we, the people we serve. And, and, and we will deliver the Lord's word, which is like streams of water, his spirit. His spirit is in the word. Amen. Amen. And so we'll go to uh, comments here. The glorious future, which is what that passage was talking about. Isaiah the prophecy was talking about uh, uh, the Lord's servants in the kingdom who I mentioned is us. This prophecy points toward Christ's rule in our time and the role we are destined to serve. As officials of the king, many here today perform ministry through his life given word. And, and that is the comments of, of the water, concerning the water, it's his, his word, his life given word, which is the spirit, his spirit as well. Comparable to streams of water in a dry country or shade in a parched land. And, and we know that shade in a parched land, a hot desert land will can save your life. It gives protection. And moving on. So broken cisterns over living water. Now, what is that? Jeremiah 2, verses 12 through 13. Be appalled at this, you heavens, and shudder, be very desolate, declares the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living waters, to carve out for themselves systems, excuse me, broken systems that do not hold water. Now, so what, what is the, the, the Bible saying here? Uh, now the people were uh, turning to other gods, and and so that symbolizes the, the people have turned away from the living God, which is a, like a fountain of living water, who gives him the, us his spirit. They had turned to false gods, which is comparable to living water, was water that came from a cistern, and that's, and that's basically a hole in the ground that water has been collected in. And it's in, well, not just a hole, but a hole that has been sealed, maybe with, with rocks, or with stone or bricks or however they seal it. But these are broken, so they don't even really hold water. Not only is the water totally in, inferior or nothing compared to the living water, the systems are broken, so it doesn't work for them. So basically, they end up perishing because of they've turned away from, from the, the loving, living God and the living waters and his spirit, which he provides for them. Let's drop down to Jeremiah 17, verse 13. Lord, the hope of Israel, all who abandon you, as those he spoke of earlier, who we just spoke about, all who abandon you will be put to shame. Those who turn away on earth will be written down because they have forsaken the fountain of living water that is the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, 
we come to uh, a very, very important uh, passage for us, water from the temple. Now, I, there's a little history on this, this, these verses that I'm about to read. We're about to read Ezekiel uh, 47, verses 1 through 12. And uh, oh, 20, let's see, 1991, nine, which is 29 years ago, I met a man who was a homeless man who was parked on the side, side of the road. He had a car, he lived in his car. And, uh, and I stopped to help him. And he had a message for me from the Lord. And he said to me that uh, he, he mentioned to me that the Lord, uh, I can't remember his exact message now, brothers and sisters, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I have little blanks of memory loss. And, but basically he was saying to me, he, he knew that the Lord wanted me to stop there and help him. He really didn't have an issue. I thought he had an issue with his car, but he was looking for someone to stop. The Lord had him waiting there for me and he, he wanted to talk to me. The Lord had a message for me and he gave me a Bible, a brand new NASB study Bible still in the box. And, and, and he, he came to my, where I was living, to my house. I, was, I had a roommate there. We lived in a house in Santa Ana, California. And so he came there and we studied the Bible together. And after about two or three weeks of study, he gave me this passage that we're gonna look at today. And so let's, let's move to this Ezekiel. 47 verses 1 through 12, which we'll read, and we'll talk about that. <clears throat> and uh, by the way, his name was Julian Kempner, and uh, he was, he, he proclaimed himself to be a disciple of the Lord. And, and uh, he taught me many things about the Bible, and we, we had many Bible studies together. Uh, and after that, uh, I, um, uh, maybe a month after meeting Julian, I called a number on my, I, because I was out of work then, I was, I saw an ad in the paper and I called the number to find, uh, to see if I could apply for this job or, or were they interested in me. And, uh, but I got the wrong number and somehow I called a church. And uh, there was background noise, and I and I asked the person. She she answered the church. It, it turned out to be the secretary of the church that later I, I joined and attended for several years. And I can't remember her name now, but she said she answered the phone. She said Newland Street Church of Christ, and I answered her back. I said Newland Street Church of Christ. I said I hear background noise. Is this a church? And it's. And it's Monday, it's Monday morning. Uh, no one has, not many people have church on Monday morning. She said, well, we're going out and sharing the word with people and studying the Bible. And we're trying to reach people to bring them to God. Would you like me to send someone out to your house? And I say, well, certainly <laughs> send someone out. And so uh, one of the, uh, who turned out to be one of the elders of the church and uh, someone with him who I came to know, they came there and they studied the Bible with my roommate and I. Uh, and two days later, we both got baptized in that church. Praise the Lord. And, and that was that started my road back to the Lord, which I had abandoned since a, a, a young man. And, and, and my, my mother, of course, and my grandmother, they, they preached to me and they spoke about Jesus to me since child, since I was a small boy. And then that just woke me up to bring me back. And since then I've, I've, I've attended several different churches. And then finally I came to the upper room. And so that's my story behind the passage that we're, we're about to read here. But Julian gave me this and he said, I want you to read this and, 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 and then we'll talk about it. He came back the next day and we talked about it. But now I wanna share this passage with you. 
It begins, uh, okay, uh, Ezekiel 47, verse 1 begins, then he brought me back to the door. Now here, let, let me give you a little background to this. This is, God has given Ezekiel, who was a priest, visions of the temple. And, and uh, notice this, it'll, it'll, the passage will grow on you, but let's just start here. It's, he's written it as if a man is guiding him through the temple, and he's, and, but this is his vision. He has a man guiding him through the temple of the Lord here. And it refers to as, as a house, really, at this point, but you'll, you'll see, it'll, it'll, it'll change. Then he brought me back to the door of the house, and behold, water was flowing from under the threshold of the house toward the east. Now, let's stop here. Water was flowing toward the east. Now, this was God's temple. Now, in, in, the, in Israel's temple, God, the Holy of Holies, where God resided, was in the far western, near the far western wall of the temple. Uh, and going, and when you, you entered the temple from the east to come in, you, and, but going east, you're, going, you're actually going away from God. Now, this water was flowing away from God. It was flowing east. And so I just want to share that with you. For the house faces east, and the water was flowing down from under, from the right side of the house, from south of the altar. And he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate by the way facing east. And behold, water was spurting out from the south side. When the man went out toward the east with a line in his hand, he measured a thousand cubits and he led me through the water, water reaching the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and led me through the water, water reaching the knees. Again, he measured a thousand, led me through the water, water reaching the hips. Again, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not wade across because the water had risen, enough water to swim in, a river that could not be crossed by wading. And he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me back to the bank of the river. And when I had returned, behold, on the bank of the river, there were very many trees on, on the one side and on the other. Then he said to me, these waters go out toward the eastern region and go down into the Araba. Then they go toward the sea, being made to flow into the sea and the waters of the sea became fresh. Now, if, if some of you uh, are freak from our uh, daily morning prayer call, you might remember that uh, Tuesday morning, uh, part of this passage was Pastor Steve's word of the day. And uh, it was at that time that the Lord confirmed this passage as today's message in my heart. Along with once when I heard Pastor Steve and and quickly my my mind went back to my meeting Julian and the time that he had me read this this very passage that we're reading now and 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 Pastor Steve expounded on it in a way that I've never heard before and I was just just totally uh, taken aback because of that and 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 it was undeniable that this was the message for us here today. And moving on, and it will come about that every, we're still talking about the, the river, okay, the, that is headed toward the east. And it will come about that every living creature which swam in every place where the river goes will live. We're talking about living water here. So every creature that swims in that river will live. And there will be very many fish for these waters go there and, and the others become fresh. So everything will live where the river goes. Now, we, we're gonna talk more about and, and explain what some of this means for us today. Uh, very many fish, uh, that might not necessarily mean fish. 
Now in, in the Bible, we, we know that our in Jesus's disciples were referred to as fishers of men. So catching men from the waters uh, uh, due to the waters or with water as they do fish. Okay, so moving on. Verse 10, and it will come about that fishermen will stand beside it from Injeti to Enegli. There will be a place for the spreading of nets. Their fish will be according to their kinds, like the fish of the great sea, very many, but its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. And by the river on its banks, on one side and on the other, will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their waters flows from the sanctuary and their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Now that's, now we know that's an amazing thing and that's God. That's the work of God there in that river that's flowing from the temple is, 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 is living water. It's living water and everything that comes in contact with it are, are blessed with life that comes from God. Water gives life, and it's the spirit that gives life. Water is spirit. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what we read in Ezekiel. Living water from God's temple. Ezekiel's passage brings to light the eternal significance of living water in scripture. The vision points to the time when God will pour out his spirit upon us during the great revival which will come upon the earth. His chosen service are symbolized by those lining the sides of the river, even like the disciples, as fishers of men, bringing others to the Lord. This is the glorious times we are all waiting for, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. And what a wonderful passage that the Lord has given us today and to teach us of what living water and his living, the spirit that he gives us is, is symbolic of. So now let's look at Jesus promises living water. I note how we began in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, water was significant to life for the, for the, uh, the patriots and, and even the other people in the land and, and Moses in the wilderness who and, and was teaching the, the Israelites that the land that they were headed to would, would be, would have living water and fresh water and, 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 uh, and that God would give it to them. And God has used this, this, this uh, necessary uh, water of life that gives life to our physical bodies to teach us about our, the spiritual life that he puts into us, that spiritual life. And then the real life is the spiritual life, because Jesus said that in, in John, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. And that, that life we get out of the ground, but that water we get out of the ground will sustain our bodies. But also the real life is, is that life that's sustained by God through his spirit, which is, as I've mentioned many times, symbolic of the living water. Okay. Now, the Samaritan woman. Now here, we are, Jesus is uh, on his way to uh, Galilee. He's just left Judah, uh, Jerusalem, and uh, due to, he had been talking to the Pharisees, but he was on his way to Galilee, and, uh, and he had to pass through Samaria. And, and his disciples were going down to the, uh, to the city, to town to get some supplies. And Jesus was, because they had had a long day, he was resting at, at the well, Jacob's well there. And now we'll pick up there. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. So the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, though you are a Jew, are asking me for a drink? 
though I am a Samaritan woman, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus replied to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who's saying to you, give me a drink, you would ask him and he would have given you living water. She said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? Um, now, before we go on, I want to, there's something else that just came up. We talked about the, we the wells that were dug in, in Genesis. Well, this, this well happens to be J Jacob's well. Now, was that, well, I think I probably read that earlier in the passage, but it, it's Jacob's well, one, a well that Jacob dug a long time ago that was still in use. <clears throat> you are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle. Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. But the water that I will give him become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now, now we, we, we're getting to the, the true meaning of living water, springing up to life, a fountain, fountains of water that God gives us in his spirit. Okay, uh, John again, John 7 verses 37 through 39. Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. The one who believes in me as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Now, um, <clears throat> well, let's read the last verse here and then, then we'll, we'll have some uh, comments. This he said in reference to the spirit whom those who believe in him were to receive. For the spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, okay, now if you remember right in the chapter before, Jesus was talking about the bread of life that gave life, the, the, the living bread. Now the bread is the word. So the word, the word is, is really connected to the spirit because the spirit is in the word. So uh, the, the, uh, many of his disciples, when he started talking about the bread of life and, 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 and said that it was his flesh that represent, was the bread of life and that the, the, the bread that Moses gave was just bread that people would eat, the, the manna was bread that people eat and would die, but the bread that he wanted to give them, the, the word of God, was was bread that that uh, they they could eat and never die, and and we know that. And then later he went on to say the message I am saying is spiritual, and so um, so in the, the passage we just read was it's in reference to the living water. So we can see that those two are connected. The, the, the two substances that are necessary for life, for, for, for sustaining the body is bread, food. The bread in, 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 in Hebrew, the same word for bread is the word for food. Uh, and, um, and it gives life to the body. And, and living water, of course, we know give life to the body. And so, so these uh, think these subs, this food and water is is um, used to convey spiritual meanings of the Bible, spiritual the the spiritual sustaining of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Okay, and we read this already, uh, verse uh, thirty nine, but. And but I'll just reread re it again. But this he said in reference to the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the spirit was not yet given because 
Jesus was not yet glorified. And we know that after the spirit was given when Jesus, after he was crucified and that act drew many to him um, and because then they knew he was the son of God. Well, many of them knew the disciples recognized that he was the son of God because he was raised from the dead. And so, and then after that, they all, baptism was implemented. And so those who, were, who expressed their belief in Jesus through baptism was given the Holy Spirit, a gift of the Spirit. And that's the Spirit we're talking about here. The Spirit wasn't given until Jesus was glorified. Okay, living water is the Spirit. Though the Samaritan woman was drinking from the same well as the patriots mentioned earlier, it was only symbolic of living water. The spirit of God represents the real living water, which Jesus promised to give the woman upon request. God gave us the gift of the spirit at baptism when we accepted Christ and promises to pour it out upon us, empowering us at his coming. Okay, and now the conclusion. Okay, so Revelations chapter seven, verses nine through 11. I'm sorry, <laughs> 17. I don't know how I saw that as, as 11. I'm gonna check my glasses. <laughs> After these things, I look and behold a great multitude which no one could count from every nation and all the tribes, peoples, and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands. And they cried out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might belong to our God forever and ever, amen. amen. And one of the elders responded saying to me, these who are clothed in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I said to him, oh Lord, you know. <laughs> he was pulling his leg. And he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and they have washed their hands, uh, I'm sorry, their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. They will no longer hunger nor thirst, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any scorching light. Now, and we, we uh, earlier, we commented that both the bread was spiritual and the, the uh, water is spiritual, the living water. And so when we're with God, we don't need either of those things because we have God, we have everything, we have his spirit. Wait, I, yeah, that's what I thought I did. But the lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And now, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this message today. Lord, this is a very timely message for this time because we know that you are soon to call us to be with you and, and to, to do the work that uh, uh, you have for us because we we believe that revival is coming and uh and we thank you lord we thank you for this message and we 
we just pray that everybody will receive this message and plant it in their hearts, knowing, knowing your living water and your living bread of life whom you give to us, who takes away our hunger and takes away our thirst and fills up us with the blessings that you place in us, that strengthen in us from day to day, Lord. And we, we just thank you for all these things, Lord. And, and uh, we, we just thank you for this message and, and the privilege of delivering this message today. And we give you all honor, all glory, and all praise. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord.